this experiment is our heart dissection so here i'm just washing out the heart to try and get rid of any blood clots you can see a nice big one there in the sink already and then what i realized was if i put up the power a bit more and i put the water in one of the atriums you can see it firing out the top of one of the blood vessels on the far side i can't remember which one it was but it was clear to see the blood going in one end and firing at the top theater then i just disinfected my desk in preparation to do this dissection and once i was pretty happy that the desk was disinfected i went off and i got my chopping board and my two hearts my forceps my scalpel and my scissors you can see there i'm pointing out the back of the heart because it's really really flat so it's called the dorsal side whereas the ventral side is very curved you can also quite clearly see the coronary artery running across the surface of the ventral side there that will branch off and supply the heart with blood and oxygen with glucose and all the nutrients it requires so again i'm placing the it flat down on the board to be easier to cut i'm just showing you here if you look at your body the left hand side is on your left and the right hand side is on your right but when you place it on the board to chop those get inverted just like we know is the case from when we're drawing our diagrams i'm then just checking to make sure i'm cutting it to the right side by testing the wall size and with my fingers by pinching in either side now what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a few short sharp cuts into the right atrium and i'm going to prove this is the right atrium because i'm going to put my finger in through the vena cava and it's going to pop out through the hole i've just made in the side therefore we have the right atrium and you can identify that structure and um, further once we get the entire heart cut open so you'll see there now my finger pops out through the hole we just made showing that i cut into the right hand side and i've made it through into the atrium i'm just then feeding to see where the ventricle is so it kind of comes across to the side so you can see my angle of cut is slightly different now but again i'm going to use my scalpel please note there i'm cutting away from my body not towards it that is an important safety feature you should state when you're talking about this in your exams and the fact that you use a scalpel now you can see I'm in the ventricle and this is going to be proved because I'm going to come up and out through the pulmonary artery there, which wouldn't be possible through the atrium. So I'm pretty happy I've, got, I've identified my internal structures there. Now I'm going to go to the left hand side. You can see again doing the same thing, identifying where the atrium is. I'm going to make my short chart cuts there and do the exact same thing. I'm happy enough that that's the left atrium. I'll then go down and cut into my left ventricle. That has allowed me to identify the internal structures of the heart and after that i'm gonna just kind of show you a few of the different features so i'm gonna really cut through the heart now in a second and show you the thickness of the two walls and as you guys would know at this stage the left hand side is far thicker because it's pumping blood around the entire body whereas the right hand side is only going as far as the lungs so that's where I, that's why i got the scissors out just to cut it all open the whole way through and um, to really emphasize just how thick this wall is so you can see it is absolutely massive there and um, really really thick really really muscular you can also see the cordite tendon there which will pull on the valves and that is the valve there now that you're seeing you can see the cordite tendon they will pull those valves open and close depending on what stage of the heartbeat is at and then let's not forget that on the left hand side that valve there is the bicuspid valve okay now he's going to cut down into the, through the right walls just so i can show you just how thin that wall is in comparison and you can see straight away it's nowhere near as thick that makes sense because the blood is only going a tiny distance in comparison now you'll see me identify the valve on that right hand side there that'd be the tricuspid valve something you should state and the fact that you found it on the right in the right hand side of the heart you can see there now i'm just trying to pull the valve up and you can see there so that will open and close during the heartbeat to allow blood through from the atrium into the ventricle and then sh uh, snap shut once it is pumped through i cut through either end then just to show you the septum which separates the two sides so there is the septum there so the right and left side is completely separated this to ensure that the blood doesn't mix between oxygenated and deoxygenated and it's very important that, that doesn't happen now i'm just trying to identify the semilunar valves there they're very hard they're they often get damaged when the heart's being cut out of the body, so they can be quite hard to find. I kind of see the remnants of one there as I'm trying to push my fingers up through it. But just note there, the two arteries that come out through the top of the heart have much thicker walls, but a really, really narrow lumen. Whereas the two veins on the either side of the heart had really wide, large lumens, but they didn't have a particularly thick wall in comparison. 
And so again, I'm just trying to show you the valve, but like I said, they can be very, very hard to identify. Once I was done then, I had to disinfect my desk again to ensure that it was ready for the next experiment or the next person to use that we don't want blood left around the desk because that wouldn't be very sanitary, wouldn't be fair on the next teacher in.